Greg with Greg's airbrushing and Greg's tattoos and today we're just gonna talk about some things that I see that novice airbrush artists, beginning airbrush artists, little pitfalls that you guys run into. Okay, so this particular video is just gonna be a collection of things that will help you uh, generate a nice piece, keep it clean, and also get better at the same time. So, the clips, as far as your clothespins and stuff like that, I see a lot of people using them. I don't use them as much, but for this video I will, because I wanna show you guys, if you're working on a big piece, or even a quick t-shirt design, and let's say you get a little bit of overspray over in that area. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys what just happens. Look at that. So once you remove your clothespin, now you gotta worry about your overspray, okay? So be very careful when using clothespins. So first we're just gonna start off with just how you hold the airbrush. And you can see I'm right-handed. Look at how I'm holding this airbrush here. I'm not really gripping the bottle too hard. This hand here, my left, is just used to balance, okay? All right, I'm not really getting tired because I'm not putting a whole bunch of emphasis, emphasis on the airbrush, holding the airbrush. It's just, it's really light. So also, my finger. The padded point of my finger right here is actually on the trigger. So, I'm drawing with my shoulder, okay? I'm not flicking my wrist. You'll see my wrist is still, it's straight. Open, close as I go up. Close as you go up, okay? Close as you go up. Now, if you wanna curve, do different directions, Also, here's a little trick that I use. I take my fingernail and I'm gliding, lay it on the t-shirt. I'm using it to glide across the t-shirt, okay? Glide across the t-shirt. So, I'm keeping my distance. I'm not, even though my needle guard is off, it's not being jabbed into the garment, okay? So, you gotta be very careful with that, all right? And again, I'm using maybe 45 to 50 PSI right now. Look at that. If you can do this here, your airbrush skill set is going to get better every day. Here's another sort of dagger stroke that I use to uh, hone my skill. And that's gonna be, I call it the pendulum effect. And let's say this here is swinging, okay? In a dagger stroke, you open and close. In this case here, we're opening and closing, but we're doing it in the middle, okay? The initial dagger stroke that we're accustomed to seeing, there's an open and close and a vertical action, so to say. You got a ground, and then as you leave the ground, you're closing. Here is a little harder to do, but if you're able to master it, man, your artwork is gonna look so much better, so much cleaner and your control of the airbrush is going to be nice as well. This here, look how far away I'm from my surface. And I'm just lightly doing a dagger stroke, but it's more of a shadow. Yeah, my guys are gonna get that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, and on the end of the dagger strokes, 
Look, we can put a little beach cattail on it. You see that a lot. Usually you see it, but it's going 100 miles an hour. These guys are so good at doing it that you really don't get a chance to see it. They're just in it and out of it real fast. And before you know it, it's gone and you can't remember everything that they did to achieve that nice looking cattail, so to say. All right, so pendulum. It's gonna give you that side to side, but you're opening in the middle, okay? And you're closing as you're going from side to side, okay? So remember, watch those clothes pins um, or anything that you have covering up or stretching your t-shirt. Uh, in most cases, try to get a board that keeps it tight enough to where you don't even need it. Uh, let's see here. Another uh, uh, training uh, exercise that I do to get better is the shadow box. I think I've showed this to you guys before but I've had uh, comments on slowing it down. So we're gonna slow it down. So we just made our box. Now we wanna start dark here and in light here. And that's something that we've done for years. But what I like to try to do is make sure you don't see any lines within the shadow box, okay? so. Let's color this in. It's going to teach you how to get a little closer. And remember, it's not about speed. It's your technique. It's not about speed, okay? As I get a little darker, I'm gonna get a little closer. And I'm going sideways so you guys can see this the best I can. darker get a little closer so you guys know now that the thinner your line the closer you're gonna be okay we wanted to do some sort of an eye right we want to put like a little eyelash on it or what have you. The thinner you want to be or you want to get the closer you get. Now the softer you want the area to be, just come back a little bit and dust in that area. And remember, look at my finger. I'm not doing a lot of work. You don't see me having to pull this trigger back anywhere near back this far here. If you're back this far, you're spitting out all the paint that you have in your bottle. You know, look at my finger here. Just lightly moving. It's just pretty much the tip of my finger. All right, here's another exercise that I use. Uh, it's called a curly cue. It kind of gets me in the rhythm of things. And it's still open and close no matter what you do. You're still going to open and close your airbrush. Just like we're doing dots, you're still gonna open and close. But we're gonna open and close and kind of pat our head at the same time. So meaning we're gonna make some circles with that. So we're gonna open and close, but we're going to keep 
the airbrush paint consistently flowing but look how small I'm able to get with it continuing to stay connected okay all I'm doing is open and closing but remember I'm using my my fingernail to glide across the surface that I'm the t-shirt surface that I'm using I wouldn't do this if I was painting a car because you're gonna scratch whatever paint that you have down foot on a t-shirt all day long open and close the closer you are the thinner the line the more further away you back the sulfur the line okay all right all right now we're just going to do a quick t-shirt design that's going to uh, uh, be a quick easy money maker for you uh, just using one color all right so check this out guys So all we did was dust a circle. I'm gonna take clothespin. We're gonna add a little bit of speckle. You see that there? All I did was lay my airbrush against my clothespin at an angle. And if you move it back on the clothespin, you get bigger specks. The closer to the tip of the clothespin, you get smaller specks. Okay, we're gonna put this back. Okay, then we're going to kind of add a base or direction for our writing to go. Most airbrush artists, as they're, they're laying out their design, you'll see them do a background in a lot of different colors and then they'll start adding the writing in black or in a darker color, so to say. This right here is uh, most of the most of what you want you want to build a base so to say you want to build a design you just don't want to just come up and just write a name right that right there doesn't really sell okay but if you put out a design and then you add a name to it it just looks uh, uh, more jazzy or so to say more exciting and uh, the client or the customer uh, will tend to, to select this design. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add Josh to this particular design. And we can do it in one or two ways. We can go brush stroke. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And we're just gonna add a couple little dagger strokes right there. We laid out our S, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three. And we have an H. One, two, three. And that's so simple as far as just count out three dagger strokes, okay? And you can create any letter that you want using that technique right there. And you're going to be able to uh, sell uh, this idea or this design. I'm gonna put a little light drop shadow behind it. Look at how far I'm back. And make sure that your drop shadow does not compete with the name, so to say. Okay, so here's an example. So let's write out uh, Josh, but we're gonna do it in script. All right. So now let's do a drop shadow. Now, you see how this right here in and of itself competes with the name. You really can't see it. Even if we go back in it and kind of thick and thin it, It's still competing. Okay. 
okay? So remember, go light with your drop shadow. Go very light with your drop shadow. If you're gonna do a drop shadow, make sure you're back far enough and you're just lightly adding that information. Uh, the last uh, little bit I'll share with you guys is uh, I normally don't do starburst with black. I've never seen a black star, but uh, it works. And uh, with airbrushing, there's really no rules that you can't break, so to say. So with this t-shirt design here with Josh, we're just gonna add a couple of stars to kind of help fill up the area, so to say. So. Watch how I do this. We're gonna use that pendulum. And we're gonna pull back. Okay. Couple of dots. Boom. There's a star. We're gonna use it again here, but we're going to add a halo to it. Now watch this. Okay, and remember, try not to go so dark with that halo, okay? And this right here, this design in and of itself, I probably do this design at the airbus shop at least five times every other day because this is the go-to design. You can sell this for 15 to 20 bucks all day long. So again, dagger strokes, or where you need to be at concerning starting out, getting control, shadow boxes. Just gonna show you how to fade colors. And the uh, curly cues here are gonna teach you how to control the airbrush. And you can draw. Uh, at a point, I felt like I could draw better with the airbrush than with a pencil. So uh, get familiar with it spend some time on it daily, and you'll also be able to uh, better control your airbrush. I'm Greg with Greg's Airbrushing and Greg's Tattoos. See you next time. Hey, like and subscribe to my dad's channel, Greg's Airbrushing.